Hello, I'm Bill Fruit. I analyze local and state economies around the country, determine if they are growing or declining, try to identify why that's happening, and then advise communities on how to improve the economic quality of life standard of living for the people who live and work in their community. I've been to hundreds of communities in the United States. In fact, I've done work now in 40 states. I work in Pinellas County and Pasco County and on three occasions in Hernando County. Some of you may have been attending some of the presentations I've already given in your area. Well, the Business Alliance of Hernando County, the Board of County Commissioners and the City of Brooksville have asked me to take another look at the Hernando County economy, determine where we are, project where we might be in the future if nothing is done, and then to set some economic goals for the area so that when we reach these goals, the standard of living for the people who live in Hernando County will improve significantly. And so we're gonna look at the economy. We're gonna determine why it's growing the way it is and what the good and bad of that situation is. We're gonna look at economic projections. I've set several goals for the area to try to achieve over the next 15 years. We will look at your opportunities and examine some of the barriers that you have. But first, we have to remember how a local economy works. Imagine all the wealth of your community is in a bucket and it gets mixed around. It goes from business to business and person to person. It's like a hive of bees following the path of a three-dimensional spider web as it goes up and down and back and forth. But there's a problem. There's a hole in the bucket and the wealth of a community is constantly being drained from it. Every time you buy a pair of shoes, a new car, go on vacation, make your life insurance premium payment, money leaves your economy and goes to those economies in which the service was provided or the product was manufactured. The wealth of a community is constantly being consumed and there's nothing you can do about it. So what does a community need to do? Well, it needs to import new rejuvenating wealth to its economy. And after it's imported, it is mixed and churned goes back and forth, up and down until it is eventually consume. Well, how do we get money into the bucket? Well, this is principally done through the business activity of your primary enterprises. Those are the companies which sell their goods or services outside of your community, thus importing wealth to the area. How do we improve a local economy? Well, it's really very simple. We create more primary industry jobs, which pay a wage higher than the area average weight. By doing this, more money flows into the bucket of wealth and the standard of living improves for everyone. So let me take a little time to explain to you the dynamic of what, what occurs when we do this. Suppose there's an employer looking at your community and they're going to hire 200 people and they have decided that they're going to have to pay $70,000 a year to get those 200 people to work for them. Why would they pay 70,000? Because an individual is compensated in direct proportion to the value of their service. And this company requires the skills necessary to do their function, and as a result, would need to pay $70,000 for those skills. Well, from where do they get their workforce? Well, the first place they look when they come in would be individuals employed at the $60,000 level. Why? Because these individuals have demonstrated they have an aptitude and skill level to earn 60,000. And with training, they would be qualified to earn 70,000. Well, the employer moves to town and draws roughly 200 people from that step on the wage skill ladder. And as a result, this creates a void, a vacuum at this step on the ladder. These employers now need to look down to the 50,000 a dollar a year worker, why? Because they have demonstrated they have the skills necessary to earn 50,000 and with training can earn 60,000 with their skill level being worth it. 
And so they draw up 200 people from this step. Well, now the $50,000 employers need to draw up 200 people from this step. And the 40,000 and all the way down this wage skill ladder, individuals are pulled up the ladder. Under this scenario, one employer coming to town employing 200 individuals at this wage level causes more than 1,000 individuals to improve their standard of living. Now, it does not exactly work like this all the time, of course. There might be individuals who are underemployed in the 40 or 50,000 level who jump to the 70,000 level with training. And also, they might in, even bring in some people. But the economic dynamic of this climbing, this wage skill ladder, is one of the most important features of quality economic development. Let's take a look at the Hernando County economy. Now, I rank your county against uh, uh, a lot of other areas to see the relative growth and the size and the quality of the area. And so I'm going to show you a lot of charts and, and graphs of, of how that occurred. Now, keep in mind, this is a video. And so while we have all these charts and numbers on the screen, you can simply play it again and stop and study the graphs. But because of time limitations, I'm going to have to you know, continue through it. Well, let's take a look at the Hernando County economy and and, and see what's happened. This is one chart showing how Hernando County's growth rankings compares to the 384 metropolitan areas. Now this time period is over the five years from 2015 through 2021. And I calculated your average annual increase, percentage increase, and then ranked it against the metropolitan areas. And this is very interesting what we've seen. Over the last five years, you had the 15th fastest growth rate in population, the ninth fastest growth rate in jobs, the 34th fastest growth rate in total worker earnings. This is what everybody earns. However, it is only the 276th growth rate in growth of annual wages. This chart shows us the actual amount in 2020 and I ranked them once again against the 384 metropolitan areas. With a population of 198,000, you ranked 227th as, a, as if you were a metropolitan area, which basically means you have a population greater than 150 metropolitan areas. But look at this. Your annual wages of roughly $42,000 ranks 383rd, the second lowest in the country and per capita personal income is one of the lowest in the country. However, per capita Medicare is one of the highest in the country, along with per capita retirement transfers. And your actual welfare ranks 173rd, which is in the middle of the pack. However, 10 years ago, you ranked about 240th, which basically means that it appears that the area is getting a little bit poorer over time. And so we can see that Hernando County is growing quite rapidly in size relative to jobs. However, the quality of the economy, what people earn, has been on gradual decline. There are reasons for that. In order to understand this, let's take a look at the primary industries in Hernando County. Now, Hernando County's growth has been driven by population growth. As more people moved here, the economy grew. Now this shows that the retirement industry is represented by retirement and Medicare transfers is the largest contributor of inflow of money into the bucket of wealth in Hernando County. The second biggest contributor are commuting workers, accounting roughly 40% of the incoming money to the area. Now, if we take away those two, we discover that manufacturing is actually the largest industrial sector that is contributing to the economy with almost 12% of the inbound money. Let's take a quick look at the retirement industry. Now, we have done the calculations that show we have a net inflow of $961 million as a result of retirement. Now, how do we do net inflow? That is determined the difference between what employers in the county send to Washington in the payroll tax 
for Social Security and Medicare versus what the county receives back, the individuals in the county, in Social Security checks and Medicare reimbursements. The retirement industry surpluses provide a consistent flow of money into an area. Even during recessions, Social Security checks and Medicare reimbursements continues to come into the area. However, there's very little economic growth caused by the retirement industry unless more people move to the county, which is population growth. The retirement industry also typically causes the formation of low-wage jobs. It's just the nature of it, nothing wrong with it, but they go out to dinner more often, causing restaurant demand, and the services that require are typically in the low-skill, low-wage category. Commuting is basically the second biggest contributor of money. Now, roughly, 39% of the people who live in the county and have a job commute out of the county for their job. This is about 34,000 people. Now they earn roughly $1.7 billion in the jobs that they have that are outside the county. Now there are also people who are commuting into the county, mostly from Pasco and Citrus County, about 11,000 of them. And they earn $411 million working in Hernando County. So in theory, they take that back with them. The outbound commuters bring this in with them. And so we can calculate what we call the net money inflow of $1.3 billion. Now that sounds like a lot of money, and it is. However, an awful lot of that does not enter the Hernando County economy. What we have, and it's not unusual, this is normal, it's called commuter retail leakage. This is the money spent by the outbound commuters, typically on their way home from work at retail stores not located in Hernando County. Our calculations show that commuters are spending more than $400 million in other counties. Let's take a look at the steps on the ladder which are impacted by the presence of the two major industrial contributors of retirement and commuting and compare it to other areas. What we have here are these wage skill steps and we've clustered them into the steps of, based upon the workforce and what their activities are in each of these counties. And what we can see under Hernando is about 18% of the people are in the low, on the lowest steps of the ladder. There's a grouping here of 31%, 21%, 20%, and then 9% earning between sixty dollars and $70,000. But look, but look, there's nothing very much above $60,000. There is a wage skill ceiling in Hernando County that eliminates a large number of the skill steps necessary to have a high standard of living in the community. It is not unusual for Greenfield counties like Hernando to have grown as a result of population because of low cost housing. But after a while, they must evolve by creating their own economy. We did projections for employment, wages, total worker earnings through the year 2036. I want to show you just the projections for jobs. The red line is the history, basically. We've seen this before. They were growing up here, through here, during the boom. We level off, we decline in jobs, we flatline, we take off again. This is the COVID year. This is this year. And the projections show that in 2023, 24, 25, the economy will flatline. And then it will begin to take off again. Then it will flatline again, beginning roughly 2031, 32, 33, and then begin to grow again. Now, the growth rate of jobs during this period of time is actually marginally slower than what it was the 10 years prior. And there's reasons for that. After creating the projections, which became the baseline for the future, 
we began to pour money into the bucket of wealth by the formation of high wage primary jobs. We created three different scenarios, a modest scenario, a good scenario, and a strong scenario. Three different goal systems. So let's take a look at this. This chart shows annual milestones for a minimum effort, a good effort, and a strong effort. And what we have are the annual net gain of primary jobs for 15 years, the required wage average for those new jobs for the three different scenarios. Now, the first three years, there's not much difference between the strong, the good, and the minimum. The reason why is Hernando County needs to develop its economic development infrastructure before it can begin to approach the strong wage category. But as we go through the years, we can see that the strong area begins to increase the number of jobs and the required wage, while the minimum effort just doesn't quite as have as many. At the bottom, we have the total. Over the 15 years under the minimum system, we're gonna create 3,100 new primary jobs with basically an average wage of $60,000 a year. The good effort, we create 5,500 with an average of 64,000. But on the strong effort, we create 6,700 new primary jobs with an average wage over the term of $68,000. This has a significant effect on the future economy of the area. Visually, this graph shows us the difference in the different scenarios that we have. The black line is the history. We begin here growing, and our red line are the projections that I showed you before. The yellow line is the minimum effort, the green line, the good effort, and this is the strong effort, but there's something you need to look at, and this is what's important. Roughly beginning 2031, there will be another recession and your job growth will decline. In the strong scenario, because the economy is more diversified, you have resistance against that downturn. And you actually won't even have a downturn because you have diversified the economy. Now, the difference between the goal and jobs and the, and the projections is roughly 17 to 20,000 jobs, which pay a wage higher than what we have today. Some people might look at that strong effort and say, well, we can't do that. We can't create those high wage jobs. We just, we, just, those milestones are reasonable and achievable. And I've yet to present the gold study to a community who doesn't choose the strong effort. And you should, because it can be done. It can be done. And you wake up 10 years from now and 10 years goes by really fast you will see a noticeable difference in, in what is happening at the county because it won't be dependent upon population growth anymore. It will be internally growing and be more opportunities for young people to stay in the area and get career jobs. So there are opportunities and I wanna quickly show you these opportunities of why you can indeed be successful. It all comes down to how the nation has the same opportunities and whether or not Hernando County will take advantage of those opportunities. Polycom has identified 20 industrial subsectors, which we call 20 for the 20s. These are industrial sectors which have been growing and will continue to grow for at least the next 15 years. We have determined they are inherently primary for a local economy that they also pay a very high wage. Now this chart shows us these 20 industrial subsectors, which are going to change a lot of economies over the period of time and already have. The number of jobs employed in Florida, the wages paid in Florida, but the green highlighted areas, this is the growth rate of jobs, show a growth rate in Florida, which was faster than the nation as a whole. Just these subsectors by 2030 will create 3.7 million new high wage jobs, need 2,500 new factories, 
cause 150 million square feet of high tech space to be absorbed. Now, Hernando County can watch it happen or it can be part of it. There are barriers in every community to preventing quality economic growth. And these barriers, basically, I'm gonna show three of them that are probably the three most important. Number one, the availability of industrial real estate. This is the single most important issue relative to economic development. If communities do not have improved, approved industrial real estate, they cannot grow economically. There must be a place for existing companies to expand to and for new companies to move to. And communities which have an abundant supply of improved, approved industrial real estate will be the ones that are most competitive in growing their economy and getting those 20 for the 20s to come to their area. The second most important thing relative to economic growth is workforce preparation. The availability of trained and trainable workers is necessary, absolutely necessary. The rule of thumb in economic development is you need people and product. People is trained labor and product is industrial real estate. And the third most important thing right now, especially facing Hernando County, it needs a comprehensive, aggressive economic development program. The economic development program basically involves three different things. A retention program where you cause the expansion of your existing companies, which is the most important thing to do, by the way, is also the cheapest thing to do. It also has a marketing recruitment arm where you try to attract quality employers, primary employers to the area, and a startup program where you grow your own, principally through incubators. Now, an economic development program focuses only on primary enterprises. They do not try to recruit retail. They do not try to recruit service companies. And the reason why is that they will form naturally as the economy grows and expands. They are the result of the growing economy, not the cause of it. So focus is, is solely on primary employers. Hernando County has great opportunity. It can take advantage of all that quality expansion that we're going to have for those high wage companies over the next 10 or 15 years if it creates a 21st century economic development infrastructure. And the most important thing, and whether or not this will happen, is if the community supports it. Community leaders, I think, are beginning to understand that the county cannot survive based upon population because of the nature of the jobs that are created, but basically the tax structure doesn't support uh, the services that will be necessary. Over a short period of time, like you've had Greenfield counties can't bring in enough cash uh, to pay for itself, but over time, it just is impossible. Also, someone's gonna wake up 10 or 15 years from now and say, why are all of our high school kids moving away? Why don't we have any jobs, career jobs in the area? We should have done and addressed this issue 10, 15, 20 years ago. Well, that's today. And it's time to begin for the county to plan for the future. And a lot of the things I've talked about, these goals that we've set are achievable. There's nothing, no major reason why you cannot achieve that strong goal. And 10 or 15 years from now, it's just going to be a different place. Not that it's so much bigger, it's just going to be so much better. Because these new companies that move in are like cash registers for, for taxes, for schools and local government. Plus, people won't have to drive an hour for a job one way. Plus, there'll be career opportunities for all of your young people if you're able to just take these steps. So we need community support. And if you have questions about this whole issue, the entire study that I did is posted on a website that you, I'm gonna show you the, the location in just a second. But download the study, 
take a look at it, call your county commissioners or your city council people, let them know that, yeah, we, we should be doing this. And if we can all unite, education, local government, and community leaders unite, you can achieve this. I know, because other communities have, which made a commitment to do it. So I want to thank you for inviting me to do the study, and I wish you all well, and I hope I can return again live to Hernando County to see how well you've been doing. Have a good day.